Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 29 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. We pick things back up in the winter season of 198 on turn 43. And we left off as Liu Bao's army has landed here in our territory. He traveled quite far actually. He definitely went through quite a bit of land to reach us uh, because he got dragged into this war due to the alliance between him, Lady Yan, Kong Zhou's faction, and ultimately Yuan Shao's faction, who is the one who initiated the war with us. And although we have beaten Yuan Shao back and we took down one army of Lady Yan, we still have to fight them off in the future. And we're going to do that starting right now against his main army, led by himself and Wang Long, who we eliminated down south. And another generic vanguard general who we don't have to really worry about. Um, he does have a unique background, a Meng Mei householder. Um, I think he's Meng Mei Ju Shi. I don't know why he's a vanguard in the game. He should be a strategist. He's depicted as one of these um, his householders, sort of like almost like a hermit, but not really. Like he's known to be from that location, and uh, he plays a role in the Jin province. Not not a big major role for historical reasons, more for romance. Um, we have this army in ambush. We didn't get their second army to run at us. I don't know where their second army went. Uh, if they're ambushed right around us, then we might be in trouble. Or else, I want to march this army all the way to the livestock farm here. For defensive reasons, of course, and also for offensive reasons. So even though they will arrive in any battle right now being marched, they arrive tired, and the fatigue level will never recover, which is not great. Dian Wei does have this skill, consideration, that extends his reinforcement range by 50%, and reinforcement range is this little circle you see. This is a standard circle size, but he has a 50% boost, so I actually think, yep, we can get this army to attack them, and it will actually drag Dian Wei in because he has that 50% extra range, and that should also drag in the garrison army that he is now part of. So we will get a lot of men to fight them here and they're on march. When you're on march, you can't retreat when you get attacked. So it's often we see us attacking army or when we get attacked, if we're not on march, we can retreat once before getting into a second battle. But they can't actually retreat, so we have them where we want them. So we're going to kick off this episode with a fight here as Xu Chu and Dian Wei will join forces to take out Liu Bao's army here. And as you can see, okay, so I guess we don't drag in the garrison, only Dian Wei will come in because he has the 50% extra reinforcement range. And we're actually not favored, which is really shocking. Well, actually, I don't know. The AI evaluation of these things are often really shocking. Um, Liu Bao has some standout units. His faction unique unit is the infantry of Jin. They look like spear guards, except for they wear a yellow belt, which you can kind of see on the unit cards. He has four of them. As far as I can see, this one's a regular Spear Guard, no yellow belt. Um, they're basically better versions of the Spear Guard. That's how you should see it. They also have a ton of shielded units, so you can expect a lot of range block chance. We do have you know, some trebuchets to crush them though, so it's not a big deal. So just wish us luck, let's go in. Alrighty, very snowy day. That's going to impact movement. So snow by itself reduces speed of all units. 15% um, for people on horses, I believe 25% for infantry. It says, yeah, because we have a heavy cavalry, which is what generals are. Um, oh, actually not all of them are heavy cavalry. That is interesting. Are they all medium? The vanguard, I guess because it's his armor. Yeah, your weight class or your mass is determined by your armor. Uh, they do have a tower here. Very interesting. Our reinforcements coming from the back. We're going to go meet them. And I don't know if the enemy will come towards us or not. This might take some time, given the slow travel speed. Uh, but once they see that we have... Well, actually, there's a hill here, isn't there? I kind of want to utilize the hill. Hmm. This might be a big gamble because these things move way too slow. So to get them up there, it'll take a long time. And the enemy should charge us, we might be in trouble. Try to get everyone moving in the right place. 
All right, we'll do this on fast. There is no battle timer, as you notice here. The reason why is because their army is on march. So they are in similar to a garrison white fight. Uh, when we beat them, uh, they're out of luck. And plus, we're the attacker here, so there's no defender advantage. A couple elements. I think mainly because of the fact that we're actually attacking a marched army. I think both of those things play a factor. All right, so we like the hill. We absolutely cannot see anything down the hill because of the weather. We're probably going to have to send someone out to scout just to let us know what's going on. Battle realism definitely gets you here. Oh, oh. They're moving. Oh. Hmm. This is going to be a slow climb. We might have a plan, since everyone's kind of hidden. I'm going to send the generals one way, just so their armies will rotate towards them. As you can see, all our units are hidden right now, simply because they just don't know where we are. So if we can get them to chase to one side and favor that side, that gives us enough time to actually deploy our units. Maybe we should just fight here. Too, too far away for... The trebuchets. See, they see us, so they, they turn and they're trying to react to it. I'm just trying to buy us a little bit more time with our trebuchets just to get into a decent position. I would really want the hill, it would be quite nice. You can see everyone's tired and they're never going to recover even if they stand still. Now, the same thing for them. They were also on March, so it's not like we are at a big fatigue disadvantage here. And given that we're on a hilltop, now they're they're just standing there facing off against our generals. They don't know what to do against us, um, but they don't see what's going on up here. And once we start launching, they're going to know and then they're going to charge the hill and then we should destroy them, hopefully. Now, we're probably not going to use all flaming arrows. The snow actually make fire damage lower, similar to rain, but we would like to keep one on fire arrow. That's usually my policy. You want them to apply the morale debuff of fire so that it's worth four points of morale hit, causing them to route more easily. And we're just chilling until the siege weapons get into position. I could make them rotate a bit more towards us. They'll change their angles based on how deep we are. You can see they're going to swing that tail a little bit closer this way. And that's exactly where we want them. Now, no one's going to duel, but if they do want to duel, doesn't want to duel. Oh, he wants to duel. Damn, wait. I am happy to oblige, actually. Let's set up a duel here while we wait for the... Oh, they, they're in position. No, they're not. What am I... I'm joking. They're so far away. Alright. We'll challenge him to a duel. We don't exactly have any buffs we can give him. Yeah, he's on his own. He does have a good one, though. After the combat start, we'll let him activate it. Oh, we got knocked off. He has no gold... Oh, he doesn't have any, like, decent weapon. He has a standard weapon. He does have an armor, but that's not really a problem. We're just gonna boost our melee evasion here. We should win. I'll come back to this. How close are we? We're getting there. So, when you duel, you see this, there's a timer on the duel, that's how long the game thinks you should beat him. If you run away after the timer has finished, then there's no penalties. If you run away before or during this timer, the penalties are listed here, and they're all for your own retinue. And if you beat him within this time, you get different bonuses. And um, basically now it's kind of neutral. As long as you survive for that long, if you're the side that's not being favored and you survive from this long and you die, you only get penalized. 
If you win the duel within the green time slot, your general will heal 50% of their health. If you kill them after the timer expires, it's only 25%. We should be killing him quickly. There we go. I wonder if their units are going to just charge me. Hopefully not. Go about shooting at us with a bow. He doesn't want to duel. We'll just back off. We should be ready. Yep, we are. Now their units are sadly not in range, but we can still hit them like this. And the second we fire, you see the eye disappears, means they see us. And they should be charging us soon. Yep. That's our opening as we head back over here. And we're gonna start manual firing these units. Oh, they had a couple here. We just didn't have vision. So we did hit. Yeah, we killed a bunch. Great. After they get pelted a couple times, they're gonna realize they're at a severe range disadvantage and they'll start charging us. How much ammo do we have? Okay, we had 18 to start. It's fine. Now these are their elite unit. The yellow circle means elite. Uh, basically, faction unique units or high level units will get the circle, telling you they're dangerous. I'm more interested in killing the range stuff than their spear units. We'll wait till they cluster up a little bit more. I feel like we're wasting shots here. Just killing some team militias. Very wasteful. They're taking a very interesting spread. Like they're going pretty deep this side for no reason. Cavalry is charging up. That's a shot cavalry, so the archers can shred those. All right, let's take a shot here. And go intercept them. We're much stronger. We have some elite cavalries on this army. Uh, I shortchanged that. Should have aimed a little bit deeper. Hmm. Gotta keep an eye out on that, but I think we have a shot there. They're trying to line everyone together before charging together. It's cute, but it's not really going to work. Alright, I'm going to cease fire for a little bit. Not many good targets. Alright, boys. Let's go elite cavalry versus some greater cavalry. Bandits, basically. The morale shock from just being charged. Are they charging? Alright, we shatter them. Come back. They're faster when they're not in wedge. Alright, 
Okay, that's just really inviting right there. A big cluster of units. Look at that. Wish we had fire to see the trails and the burns on the ground. Alright, we'll let them come up the hill a little bit. They're a little slow here. They keep reorganizing like their fronts, like which units are charged which side. They put the cavalry in the back, very interesting. The melee cavalry, those are actually pretty strong. I made more shots. Uh, plenty more, we should keep firing. Alright, these are still not in loose formations because they haven't get hit by a rocket. Let's see if we can time it perfectly with the way they're moving and the way we fire. Come on. There we go. I think we did it. There we go. Took out that line. Let's aim on this side. Let's see if that prediction works. Yeah, pretty good. Alright, archers are gonna start the fireworks soon. I'm gonna move these guys to the flank. I'm gonna keep Genwei here for the charge resistance bonus. Xu Chu can probably go join the fight. Same as Hua Xiong and the rest of them. He can chill back here. Now, I want to kill the crossbowmen, we mentioned that already. They will lead the flank attack. Archers are starting to join the fun. I'm gonna pop everyone into shield wall. Just to resist the enemy range a little bit. Oof. I feel like there's not that many crossbowmen to warrant another shot. I'd rather kill some of these spear units now. Their shot cavalry can't make it. Sheep, can we fire here? Feels like that's the good angle here. So we're gonna wipe out these spear. Come on. Ah. Uh, oh, there. Oh, there we go. Great shot. Keep going, keep going. Keep looping. I want to. I want to kill these guys. Actually, we can all kill these guys. Ignore the spears. They don't really matter at this point. They got so distracted by our cavalry that they just kind of ignored our archers. We're out of shots on the trebuchet, or at least we're down to one shot. Let's try to kill the crossbowmen. We can just keep pulling them. The general wants to fight, huh? I'd rather pull back, though. Get long, long. Anything we can use? Splash damage? Yeah, let's do that. Actually, he's not. Yeah, he's got to be in combat. Another splash damage. That's tenacity of steel. Balong's gone. He has resiliency, don't worry. They became friends already? He's already mad. Alright, the infantry are on us, which I don't want to deal with, so we're gonna get out of here. We have archers for a reason. Um, I'm gonna shift them over. Feels like this is the front now. There's one guy over there. I'm gonna grab all the generals and go kill them. Cavalry's gonna reset and charge them. Ooh, turtle formation. Very strong. See, somehow he charged into a spear wall and didn't get dismounted. Oh, they ready routed. Okay, so general's back on the Obiao. 
Archer is kind of running out of ammo. That's fine. They're kind of running out of men as well. I'm gonna first get Liu Bell out of here. You guys can do fire damage too because it's not all about morale hits. It's not about actual damage. Alright, we won. Guarded our heal. No one even came close. Alrighty, so pretty easy fight. We killed the general who didn't have resiliency. We got the gold bow from uh, Liu Biao. This is the bow that was on Huang Zhong at the beginning game. He steals him. Uh, he steals the item from Huang Zhong because uh, he's one of his generals. Uh, it's fine. We'll just take income. We lost some cavalry, I believe. Not a big deal. They'll heal up. We're in our own territory. Uh, well, actually, not this turn because they marched, but still fine. So Xun Yu can pick up resourcefulness. Now we have flaming shot on the tribuches, which only makes them so much more stronger. The generals did well, but now we want to pull back a little, just to make sure they're in reinforcement range. He's probably going to recruit a new general on his turn, but they're pretty beat. Uh, they're not going to be able to do much to us. Now our other armies, we would like to counterattack into Xu Chang over here and also take back Chen. So we're going to march our army down. Now there is a chance of Yuan Shao appearing with a full stack somewhere here, but hopefully they will make him stall them. I don't think they're at war. Oh, actually no, we made them at war. Yep. So that's going to be fine. He's going to be able to hold that against uh, the borders for us. And this is our burned officer army, and we're going to shift them down as well, just to debuff enemy armies along the way. This temple is probably going to be a sacrificial county. It's going to be taken over and over again by whoever invades us, and we just have to retake it. It's much easier for us to defend the garrison here. If we get this into a actual garrison variant of our faction unique building, which requires a reform, which we're working towards because we have this level 2 brain storage already that's being saved for the reform trigger. Now all we have to do is level up some of our buildings. So, Guangling is going to need a corruption reducing building here quickly. And over here we finished our first building here. We're going to go with, not oh not that, we're going to go with land development. We're going to go with uh, more food production here. And that's about it. Not much to do. Pretty much build everything already that we can in most of these commanderies. The other ones don't have to build commands because we don't have the population for it. This one's bouncing back, so it should be okay. Alright, so just a quick check. We don't need to check turncoats this turn because all three of our turncoats are returning to us, so we don't have any empty spy positions. We'll get some nice characters next turn. I didn't want Zhao Du to come back because we wanted to use him to help us turn Luo Jun, who we missed out on last time. But we can still try to find a different turn coat, perhaps. Uh, we do still need to check diplomacy. We got oh, we got a sword as well. Wow, we got some really good items. Um, heirloom bow of Huang, uh, Huang Zhong's bow, very strong. Increased cunning. Uh, it's a uh, good for your own attack as well. We could give it to one of our strategists, um, but not right now. There's no one really urgent. Diplomacy-wise, just a quick scan of quick deals. Yuan Shao had enough, but perhaps he can pay us more than 0.3. Liu Bao still haven't had enough, and Lady Yan definitely haven't had enough. We have a couple of non-aggression pack, which is quite interesting. Gao Gan is Yuan Shao's cousin, or nephew? Yeah, he's Yuan Shao's nephew. I don't know why he wants to sign a peace deal with us. Han Fu has, or non-aggression pack with us, Han Fu has been kind of a puppet of Yuan Shao, uh, you know, historically speaking. He was kind of assigned to look after him, but then after Yuan Shao kind of attacked him, he became a vassal, pretty much. Alright, nothing too crazy here. I don't really care about Yuan Shu here. Alright, nothing, nothing really important. We don't have any more deals with Yan Bai Hu apparently, has ran out. He's at war with Sun Tzu. We are in a non-aggression pack with him. If we can eventually upgrade to a military access and grant him passage to attack Yan Bai Hu, maybe that works. Although military access really, really never stopped AI in the first place, like he would just walk through our land anyways. I don't think that's a requirement. 
we do have to be mindful of his attitude. I'm still thinking about just saving this for another proxy war. It's worked out very well for us, splitting Liu Dai and Lady Yan, and in you know, and you know, a side effect of that is splitting Liu Dai away from Yuan Shao's influence, and now Liu Bei away from Yuan Shao's influence. So, I think we'll save it for a proxy war. And I think we're good. Let's continue the next turn, get all these awesome characters. Alrighty, so let's see, it's spring, we got a guard, not a bad item. Four more characters, some buildings got finished. Uh, let's grab our reform, we know exactly which one we want. We saved up the grain garrison to get this, so we can get tier 4 rice and grain garrisons. And the rice one is going to grant us faction-wide 10% replenishment per rice patty, that's rank 4. So we have two of them, it's going to be 20% passive instead of 10%. That's just amazing. And then the one that we're going to change in Peng Cheng is going to be 10% local. But most importantly, it's going to give a better garrison for defense. So let's issue this. And we can officially get rid of the building that we were building here in Sapi. Useless building. Refund that. And we can convert this to the defensive building. So now this is very strong defensively. This is okay. It has a wall. It could be stronger if it didn't have a wall, but because this is probably our stronghold in the border now, we can start upgrading these uh, two walled commanderies and we don't have to exploit the large town looping trick. Now, Luo Jun's army has landed over here. He has so many good items. I totally regret not grabbing him. He got made faction heir. Is that why he's happy now? He's 34. He's not very happy. We can we can try to get him if we lower him by a little bit now no one else in his faction is willing to turn but if we beat him in battle you suffer a satisfaction penalty if you get beat so we could make him a turn code by the end of this turn we do have a few armies within range that can punish him now this one has the movement to do so i believe this is close enough and he's also in march so we could punish him with our main army here Liu Bao is also trying to run away I don't think we're going to let him leave. Yeah, they both have two layers of resiliency. He has three layers. It's still green. It's going to drop yellow and then red. He still he dropped one, but he's still yellow. Um, both of them are going to hate us. I mean, Wang Long already hate us because we ended his faction. So it's not a big deal. Now, we would like to move them into the right county. So if we take a look, they're in different counties. This is a tougher army. Because it's actually full strength. So what we want to do is just move them into the county. The second they move into the county, the burn officer debuffs start getting applied. I believe we have another burn officer here, right? So we'll move them in as well. So all of a sudden we have four burned officers plus one more here. Actually, there's only two here, right? Because this is a bandit character. All right, so we have three here already. He will be the fourth one. That's 120%. So if we just attack them, which we'll do right away. Take a look at their ammo. Zero. 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 Insanely strong Chen Royal Guards. No ammo. We pretty much wiped out their ammo supply. And then conversely, 22 on Tribuchet because we're getting boosted by 60% and then 56 ammo on archers, 28 ammo on crossbow, it's just insane. And we're going to be here to wipe them out. I can't believe we're not favored here by the AI. I mean they have elite units, I understand that. And we have not so elite unit, but still, come on. They have no ammo and they have no siege weapons. Well, let's take them out. He has resiliency. We can beat him up. It doesn't really matter because we're using the turn code to grab him. So even if there's like a faction grudge, it shouldn't really matter. I would probably still avoid dueling him because if we kill him, then he might pick up a wounded trait. And that's not something I want to happen. So let's hopefully just route the army. And let's go. All right, beautiful spring weather. They have the high ground here, which is a, a bit sad but but it should be okay um there's also lots of trees and staggered trees so that's actually pretty helpful what i mean by that is like a little bit of opening in between where we can put our units that can create fire and we can burn those trees as they come down we can kind of burn them here 
All right, that's our main unit. And then these are crossbowmen who has the longest range. Now, we're not worried about getting shot by enemy range units this time because they have no ammo at all on their range units. So we're just trying to buy as much time as possible for our units. Now, do they have a lot of cavalry? They have two cavalry, okay. Uh, I think if we just stretch them out as wide as possible, it's not a bad idea trying to stall. I'm not sure which side they'll approach. They can easily just switch sides. Uh, the, we don't actually need them to tank enemy range, right? They have no range. We'll hide all the cavalry. Make sure they're they're actually hidden. The tree needs to be dense enough. What What's happening with you? And you? There we go. So they're off on the side. They'll come in flank once the melee starts engaging. I don't want to duel him, but I am willing to duel the other two if they're willing to duel us. Alright, they're going to charge us. They see us. They see the siege weapons. They know they have absolutely no ammo, and we'll try to go for some of the higher value troops. Because uh, they are going to be heavily armored and difficult for our infantry to take care of. They have a lot of, they have a lot of spear guards, actually. All right, so this part is more about lighting up the forest because if we light up the forest, the fire damage will be continuous on all enemies traveling through it. Uh, so we're gonna try to utilize that. Mm, because we're on the low ground, as you can see here, when I issue that command, it won't fire because even though the range indicator says we can hit it, we actually can't. We can hit that. Not the greatest hit, but we'll take it. We have 22 ammo, so we got to get them out. The elevation does play a role with projectiles. Physics is still a real thing. Alright, two shots there. They like to travel through forest, I like to hit forest. And as we rank up, the firing rate, reload rate will all speed up, as you can kind of feel how fast the firing rate is. So just be mindful when you're aiming a little bit ahead, you don't have to aim that far ahead because the reload rate is much faster on a higher ranked trebuchet. Well, they're speeding up. My goal is to light up this forest here to welcome them. Oh, they're shifting. Any willing duelist? Oh yeah, okay. We're gonna grab one of the commanders. Uh, it's almost impossible to hit cavalry. I'm not even gonna try. She has absolutely no items. We should keep spamming abilities because Hotel has the reduced cooldown. Now we're not in combat yet, which is why we can't use it. We're try walking towards each other. There we go. Alright, we'll let the cavalrys come. I'm gonna pull one unit this way. Shift the angles a little bit. Uh, the 15 second just passed and then the cooldown starts. Cooldown's really fast. I'm trying to light up the forest now. Yeah, that is almost ready. Use it again. Yeah, we're trying to light up this forest here. You can see it's starting to catch fire. Yeah, hold on, that's one. Can we get another duel? Uh, only Luo Jun. Not interested. Luo Jun has gold armor, silver weapon. Get on our horse and then we're going to get out of here. Get get off, get off, get off. Let, up, let me mount. There we go. Alright, let me go chase something. We can get away from the battlefield with chase speed. 
All right, they're coming really close. Let's try to boost the charge resistance. All right, we caught their cavalry here, but we probably were moving. Want to chase that. Give everyone range block chance. Time to pull out our cavalry. Hmm, just have to hold here. And to stay on them, or else they're gonna kill us. Alright, they start seeing us, which is good, because we want to make sure they don't actually charge this side, because this side has no front line. I'm gonna do a little bit of looping, let's use them to build up some speed. And then... Firing on them, I don't want to get hit by our own friendly fire. Then can we get a charge? Okay, now stop firing. Stay on them. Alright, we got the archers killed everything else. Alright, pull back. Preferably some distance. Let's clean this up first. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Don't sneak up on us. Ah, go kill whatever you want. Leave Cao Cao busy here fighting elite cavalrys by himself. Alright, now we can flank with them. Alright, Guo Jia is probably not the best person to fight cavalry, but he's good enough to slow them down. Set. She has really high morale. We should probably get upgraded cavalry for this army too. We have faction unique units. The morale is too low on these militias now. And the damage too. We're facing much more elite enemies. We can't afford it. We should upgrade. Alright, they finally did their job and chased them away. Actually, no, help Tao out first. See, the second you get here, they get finished off. Play kill her. Now we want him to route, he will. She is even routing. Army loss is kicked in. There we go. Alright, we win this one. Uh, not the cleanest victory. Tough fight. They have a elite army even without range. Alrighty. We'll be taking... I'll still be taking income, I think. Because we're in our own territory. Oh, he's finally ranked 6. That's key. We can give him extra armor, but I think we've been aiming for the capture percentage here. So we're going to continue to go for that. And we have a couple uh, instances where we can uh, increase our cavalry. So we can replace these with our faction unique ones. Hall's Hall is actually level 6 so he can actually get the heavy variant. Now the heavy variant is not better than the regular variant in my opinion because of the huge loss of speed. That's pretty much the only rationale here. You can get these with pretty much the same stat. You get about the same charge bonus, the morale, 10 points difference, same attack damage. The difference is armor, thus math, 
and also a difference in speed. Now, I prefer to be a little bit more mobile with my cavalry, so I prefer the regular version actually. So we're gonna just get the regular. And they're a lot cheaper too. And then from these two, the lower rank one, I'm gonna swap them over to the tiger and leopard as well. One is good enough to tank archers in the future. Once we get saber cavalry, I'll probably switch over to saber cav just for the heavier armor, which makes them a little bit better tanking enemy archers. Right now, the militia is going to have to do. And then for Sao Dun here, I think we want to swap to the heavy spear guards. And I don't mind four of them, to be honest. They're not bad. Um, they're very good, actually. And the other two unit in the end is going to be two protector of heavens, which are also very, very strong. I'm trying to debate whether we just need two of them, maybe. And then we do four Protector of Heavens, which might be better. But these guys are really not offensively strong. They're just good at defense. And we only need maybe two of them in the very front. So what we can do is just take, take the two that has the lowest level, swap them. And then in the future, swap them for Protector of Heavens. And I think we're good. But that army needs some time to rest. And they will rest over hey, here. We still have this one to chase. Now we would like to debuff their ammo a little bit as well. So we're going to shift this army just into the right territory here. And this is not actually going to be a real fight. We'll delegate this one. This one should be pretty clean in our favor. Heavily in our favor. 21% capture Wang Long. Let's see if we can do it. He does end up working for Cao Cao in history. We got more items. Got a sword, a jian. Okay, he didn't come. We can chase them some more? Or is our movement done? Uh, our movement's done. Okay, that's fine. Uh, our goal is to attack this farmland, so we're moving in the right direction. Um, yeah, I can have them sit here. They can't reach there, but that's fine. So we have another level up. Yu Jin. Okay, so he's an administrator. But I want Tenacity of Steel first. And Expertise is always good for cost reduction. And we have 5,000 left. Let's see. Danyang. We're trying to upgrade this to small regional city. We still have... Oh, we, we're not doing the... Right, we're not doing the assignment to do cost reduction. That's fine. More income is often better than cost reduction. So here we want Stay Workshop for Corruption Reduction. We do want... Ooh. Right, we do want the extra replenishment. 5% is no joke, so that's going down first. Can I not afford it? Oh, 4,100. That is quite a lot. Okay, I guess we can't afford it. That means we can't afford any of the buildings that's left. Nor can we afford new turncoats or new hires. So, quick scan. No items, right? No items. Well, we see them this turn. Yingbu. Uh, this is a bandit character. We're going to pass on him. We have plenty of vanguards right now. Not that interested. Ooh, this is a bandit. He's a little old. We, we talked about him already. He's just a little old for us to rank him up to get poison volley, so we're not going to go for him. Nothing amazing about her either. Um, even though we can't afford them, I could change my mind on the buildings if we see a very important one. The only one here that stands out is Jashu, but we'll get him when we reach Duke for free, so there's no rush there. Yeah, eventually investing in a spy for Swinsel's faction is probably a good idea. Now, we also got new characters this turn. We got Lady Mi. She's finally in our faction. We take her item away. And I think I'm going to marry her to our son. Just so that we have her in the family. And by our son, I mean our oldest son, Cao Ang. Uh, who's much younger than her, I believe, but that's fine. Cao Pi is a little boy right now, so that's not going to happen. Or we marry her to Cao Ren. Oh, are they, they're closer in age, I believe. Right. Okay. So that would work. Now, Cao Ren is no longer on the family tree because our father has passed and his connection to us was through our grandfather's line he's our cousin um so they oh, actually no it still says he's a distant relative so even though we don't see him here yeah we don't see him on the family tree he will still produce kids 
oh, I don't have money for the marriage, uh, but we do intend to marry them. Mi Zhu is Lady Mi's brother. Um, he's decent enough. He does have 30 points. He has a semi-unique background. He has a pretty good skill tree. Yeah, decent enough. Right, he can be a good administrator. 5% income from all types. And also can be a good army, to be on, honestly a general. I think he will work. Zhao Du is a farmer. Now, farmers are nice. But do I really need another champion? Because we have a ton of champions, even a ton of farmer champions. Does he have any special skill that might make him better than others? Not what I see. I mean, extra speed is not bad. No, I think we fire him just to shed some salaries. So we're not going to keep Zhao Du. He's on his way. And we're on our way. Let's go to the next turn. Um, I don't think there's anything we need to really take care of in diplomacy. Yuan Shao now wants to fight again. Probably started a new army. Liu Bao dropped quite a bit after losing that fight. Okay, so this is interesting. Liu Bei is warming up to becoming our vassal. Same as Gao Gan, which is interesting. Hmm. We'll keep keep eye out for that. Uh, let's continue for now. Okay, Liu Bei and Liu Dai form a coalition. Oh. Tao Ying joining our enemies camp. Not surprised. They share a common enemy, us. Okay, we have a relationship boost between two of the generals. These are just random relationship boosting events. Now, we are probably still going to chase him down. He has resiliency, so he's fine. We always had the chance to capture him. Ooh, also we have new council missions. So, build an upgrade, that's not hard. Embed a spy in Tai Mao, that's not really going to happen. Someone to grant Commandant, that's easy. We can't even swap them to finish that mission. But right now, there's no rush to finish. We can finish all the missions together before the next refresh. Okay, so... I'm going to try to eliminate this army to make him go back. By go back, I mean like return to court, angry and all that. So we're going to quickly wipe them out, I think. We're going to retreat once because they won our march. Liu Bao's second army. Wow, even weaker than his first, or a lot weaker than his first. I'm just going to delegate this one. They don't have much left to fight us with. And I know that he has resiliency so he can't die. Everyone else died. Maybe we get her item. Ah, oh, no items. Lady Yan got killed. Oh my god, no! We can't steal him now. He's faction leader. Okay. Well, Huo Pan, the guy who's standing in front of us, is willing to be our spy. Oh, that is a bummer. We missed out on him by that much. I was trying to save like 40 gold or 40 copper. And it's coming back to bite us. We could have him, all that item, action leader, potential. He has burned officer as well. Um, I don't want to fight him here. I want to heal for a turn in our own territory. We're not fully healed, but we will be after this turn. Oh, close enough after this turn. They're not going back either. We're going to eliminate them here too. Alright. Not willing to work for us. We'll release him. That might actually give us some fondness. I mean, he has a grudge against us, I'm pretty sure, because we wiped out his faction. Um, but maybe this will help cancel it out. Mm. We also should heal up a turn here before we cross. We'll probably also trespass for a little bit of debuff and satisfaction, That's or diplomatic values, but it'd be okay. So they need to go follow them. I don't see any enemies coming, so I could even have them go follow them. Yeah, we'll just all follow. Happy trails here. Now, I 
am not interested in other turncoats, so I think... Ooh, Distinguished. Okay, not bad. We'll be taking most of our money and investing them in our commanders. So this is going corruption reduction. This got upgraded already. So over here we want corruption reduction. Same exact idea here. This needs to be upgraded. Oh, now we're poor. Okay. All right, we spent our gold. Um, we did take a look at turncoats. I don't think there's going to be big diplomatic changes. Oh, wow, that's huge. He actually likes us, huh? Uh, personal rivalry with us, though. But this peace deal, we're going to take. We can take land from him without taking land, actually. We can take the farmland from the deal. What? Okay, then... Oh, oh, we want this. We want this before he equips it on someone because Lady Yen just died and these got taken off of her. Okay, so we will peace out, not take the farmland for a while. Either he'll return to war with us in the future or we'll go to war with them. Well, he's making a ton though. He does not have much saved up, so I'm not even going to go for... I don't even know. Is he willing to give us some? Yeah, he's still pretty generous, to be honest. Although, I think I'm going to make, make, make more here. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to make more here. Alright, so 7,700, two gold items, and a peace deal. Sounds pretty good to me. Alright, we got our hand on another gold horse. Now, yeah, we're probably just going to wait for him to return to war with us in the future. But now this war is gone. Liu Bao's still at war with us. He will eventually pay us one day. Now, this horse is authority plus instinct um, plus 10 melee evasion, but not as fast. So not all gold horses are made equal. Ours, 105 speed, 2k mass. Theirs, 80 speed. So this horse, although gold, is not as good as ours. Ours have max speed, max mass. They have the trade-off between increased mass, 2.5. It's fast, it's heavier, but you lose so much speed here. So it's not that good. Um, instinct makes it more of like an aggressive type of charging. I think this is better on like a vanguard who you don't want to duel. You just want to keep ramming into enemies. Um, I don't think we have a character like that. I mean, kind of. Yeah, kind of. I mean, yeah. Historically, he marries our wife's sister. So he's in-law. Give him a guard as well. Alright, not bad. Alright, so we got that war finished. Um, we can end turn now. We spent all our money already. So let's continue. Oh, Liu Bei peace deal with Yuan Shao. Hmm, I don't like that. Okay, so first off, one new character. Magistrate hates his old faction, but he's not good unless he brought items with him. He did. He actually has an artisan, which is not bad, which is actually really good for one of our commanderies in Danyang. So we're going to spend a thousand. Danyang's, uh, does Danyang still need minus one construction turn? Probably not. It's pretty built. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the builder from Yu Jin, put it on Dian Wei, and then give Yu Jin the artisan from our new character, and then we can fire our new character. Do we not have any... I guess we have some resolve boosters. 
population growth could help. Um, man, we have good stuff. This is not that good. This is just unique. This is really good. Um, I don't know if Guojia needs it though. The ambush increase percentage is pretty nice, not gonna lie. Uh, which one of you are angry at us? All right, 20. Um, I guess you will be our warrior, the cheapest boost we can afford. I feel like we have oh Sun Tian also angry, right? Almost the same reason. There's one more attendant. These are the cheapest one. Patrol commanders, attendant, and warrior. Right. We're gonna need other satisfaction boosting mechanics. Um, it'd be fine after we become emperor, but right now it's not really. Alright, we'll worry about them later. Uh, there's more things to worry about. Alright, 27. I'm gonna avoid those red faces. Did we fire the guy yet? Sometimes we forget. Yep. Sometimes we forget when other things come up. Alright, so we don't actually have enemies, I feel like. Aside from Yuan Shao, we're not fighting anyone anymore. Well, Liu Biao, but we don't see them, so out of sight, out of mind. We can go take this and trade it back to Liu Bei. But I feel like that's a lot of work. I'd rather them come to us, we beat them back, and then we sign a nice deal. And that's how I prefer to do things, uh, but it feels like if we're going to expand in the future, it is still most likely in this direction. Um, depends on when we want to betray the High Empire again. Are we trading with them? We're not. Okay, so we can actually fight them anytime. It will drag Dongmin back into a war with us, and we have... Right, we have a bunch of deals. Wait, we don't have... Wait, we have... We're not at war with them. They're, this diplomacy thing is wrong. Are we still at war with Dongmin's faction? We are not. We have a trade deal with them. What is this? This is nonsense. Right, that's just a display error. Ignore that. We actually have a deal with them. So I can't actually go to war with them. I can't go to war with the High Empire either. I could go to war with Heyi. I could also sell our army down to grab the weapon craftsman here. There's a weaponsmith here. I don't know who controls it right now, but we can go find out and take it over. And also attack Liu Biao along this way, because he's right here. That could be a plan, but I don't, I don't like that plan. I feel like we just play defensive for a little bit. I'm sure someone's going to turn on us. Taoyin's most likely to just flip out on us because we, you know, treated them poorly. So I'm going to put Cao Cao on this side. Put Dan Wei on this side. I don't know which one. Which one's more likely to get attacked? I guess we go here. If anywhere else get attacked, we can respond. I'm gonna stick the burned officers with Cao Cao's army. They actually don't have much to do. They'll probably just shift back a little bit here. And then we'll focus a couple turns on internal development. Just so we can afford stuff. All right, three more turns on the commandery. Trying to get our corruption reduction going. We don't have much money right now, to be honest. All right, that needs to get corruption reduction going. That's like the most important thing we need to do. Ah, oh, we still can't build that. Yeah, running two armies with no war to fight is not a great idea. Zhang Yang's faction. Not interested? Yeah. Okay, we're pretty much waiting to get attacked, I guess, um, as our income is dwindling, to be honest. Uh, let's continue. Alright, Gong Sun Zan request Long Kuang's wife to join their war's daughter, maybe, against Gong Sun Du. Upgraded. Military Alliance, Liu Bei, Liu Dai, Dong Min. Interesting. 
Alright, a lot of peace deals. Okay, so angry characters will try to assassinate us. And uh, this is basically a reflection of their poor satisfaction. And we can just pay them off to boost. I believe this is because our satisfaction boosting assignment timed out. Which is why everyone dropped by 10 and now everyone's really low. Um, we just pay them off. Or we can kill them, but we're going to pay them off. I'm pretty sure that's why. Okay, he's angry with us too, but he also ranked up. Pick up that. I I'm guessing the assignment timed out. Yep. Alright, we need to put Sun Tian back here. That's pretty vital for us right now. And then... Yeah, commerce income boost sounds pretty good. If we can get a... We can we get a mix industry one? We don't have a character who has that. There's a really nice one that gives 50% industry. 50%. It's it's like a combo between industry and commerce. I mean, we can do just commerce. It's fine. Who are you, Burn officer? You should be on the field, but you don't like anyone. She should be in the third army in the future, but right now she's just not. Hmm. Mijul doesn't like working here, but he might just have to work here. Because I want the Burn Officer on the field. Alright, four new characters. Quick peek. I doubt there's any... Oh, Silver Bow. I mean, we have a Gold Bowl that we're not even using. So I'm not that drawn by this. Although, it is nice. Not gonna lie about that. Alright. Let's get some more internal development going. Hmm, that trade deal is something I'm regretting a little. We can always go wipe them out. But the reason why we never wipe them out is because I don't want to be the one wiping him out because I want his characters. Alright, before we spend all the money on... Buildings. Let's see if there's any change here. Nope. It's also glad to see we're not the only one struggling with in, uh, satisfaction management. Alright, so we just want corruption reduction going on everywhere. So that is the first thing you build, pretty much. State workshops. Um, over here, you can't get it upgraded until you are a small city. So we need to work on that. But I don't know if that's the best place to spend our money right now. guess so okay we're poor once again um, with no real enemies in sight Manchal has a stack here but it's pathetically weak as you see I could just cancel the trade deal and try to go to war with them after like five turns. Because we're running out of things to kill. And because we ended that trade agreement, we should be able to get one that's slightly better. There's oh actually theirs was worth quite a lot. 373 734. Who am I not likely to fight? High Empire, actually. Because we have a trade deal with Domin. Right, he's not very nice to us. Um, we have a lot of extra stuff. Like, this is never going to be used. We can throw in one food. He doesn't even want food. He has a lot of cash saved up. Yeah, lots of cash saved up. Doesn't mean he's generous, though. Just means he has a lot of cash saved up. I will take it. Uh, this just frees us up for a war in about five turns. Um, when can we invoke three turns? Okay, we'll try to finish these quickly. Switch some of the positions. Not much we can do. Uh, let us continue. Alright, Nobel is now willing to pay us for a peace deal. Let's see, how much points are, is that? 4.7? It's not that high. He doesn't have anything good. I mean, I don't mind this peace deal, but I also don't... I mean, he's here, right? If we 
bust through here, we can take his land. So, no. Alright, so the Yuan brothers have stopped fighting. Yuan Shao is signing peace deal with pretty much everyone. Little conquer, since he'll make a name for himself. Nothing too crazy happening. We have entered a lull state as uh, we have kind of peaced out with everyone around us except for Yuan Shao. Yeah, we're going to shift our army now a little bit south as we focus on fighting back some of the corruption that we're dealing with. And we're going to attack this way into the central plains here, into Jinzhou, to grab some of Liu Bao's territory. And by that time, the peace deal with Luo Jun should time out and we can come back and destroy them as well. It's just unfortunate we weren't able to grab Luo Jun in this playthrough. Uh, he's now a faction leader, there's no way we can get him. So that's out of the question now, we don't have to think about it. And we'll continue to try to eat up more territory here uh, while balancing our diplomatic standings with the rest of the factions. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one, and see you guys next time. Bye!